on this episode of the Bell Engine Project. I make the frame wings and brass bushings. For the design of the locomotive I've been using Fusion 360. One of the more recent features of Fusion 360 is sheet metal design which lets you unfold a part and produce a flat pattern. For the frame wings I use this to generate a dimension layout of the part taking into account the material required for the folds. I started squaring the 3mm plate on the mill. The next job was to mark the layout on the part. I scribed lines for the folds and centre punched the whole locations for drilling. Then it was off to the drill press to drill the holes. Using the centre punch marks to centre the holes. The part was then cut to shape using a hacksaw and hand filing before being folded. To fold the part, I used a vice mounted folder which magnetically attaches to the vice jewels. This works well for small parts and gives a nice sharp fold. I finished the folds with a hammer with aluminium soft jaws to protect the part. Then the frame wings could be attached to the frame using M3 screws. Here we have the frame 
the wings attached. The next parts to be made are the brass bushings, which are pressed into the frame. To make these, I use the lathe, starting with 10mm brass rod. To hold this in the lathe, I use my ER32 collet chuck, which uses the same collets as I use with the mill. I use a carbide insert tool to square the end of the part before zeroing the x-axis on the digital readout. This allows me to locate the features accurately without having to mark the part. Once the part's turned to shape, I switch to a parting tool. Once again, zeroing the digital readout on the end of the part start parting the part off before stopping to switch to a chamfering tool to chamfer the corners. A quick clean up with an abrasive pad and it's ready for drilling. Starting with a spotting drill. Followed by the final drill size, in this case 3mm. Then it was time to finish parting the part off. I deburred the hole in the part using my Noga Rotodrive countersink. Then the bushing could be tapped into place in its hole in the frame. You may notice that the frame has changed slightly. At this point I decided to remake the frame with some additional material in the rear section and with many more tapped holes to avoid having to have so many nuts inside the frame. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.